prepare for trouble, make it triple. Today we are be looking at Sonic the Hedgehog Triple Trouble, the next game in the Aspect Sonic 8-bit lineup, and this is a direct sequel to the last game they made called Sonic Chaos. In fact, the game is known as Sonic and Tails 2 in Japan, but Triple Trouble's their better title, so we'll be calling it by that title anyway, because we live in America. Well, I live in America. You guys might live in America, but I do, and most of my viewers live in America. So yeah, I can choose between Sonic and Tails, and we're on a new Game Gear adventure. But, hey, why was this game made? What was the reason? Just a tie-in. There's, like, no background information on this game. So let's get into the actual story, and so we can talk about the gameplay, aesthetics, and all the other crap that you guys like to hear about. The story is pretty basic, like most of these 8-bit Sonic games are. It's Eggman has acquired the six Chaos Emeralds. Yes, we're still dealing with six Chaos Emeralds in this game because I guess they always forget to do it or they're lazy to implement Supersonic. Eggman's acquired them somehow. That's what it says. Unknown means Dr. Eggman manages to acquire six of the Chaos Emeralds. Except for, and all of them magically gets out of his hand except for one. And then some bounty hunter named Fang, who we'll get into a little bit later, finds all of them except for the one because Eggman has the one and yeah he found them and Sonic has to challenge him to get a Chaos Emerald. Eggman also decides that it's a good idea to trick Knuckles again because Knuckles is an idiot and decides to believe Eggman that Sonic wants to take over the world which makes no sense. There is a little bit of a uh, non-canon thing. I mean, this game is technically canon I guess but there's like a fan rewrite to make that make more sense because he does trick him again in Sonic Adventure but there at least it makes a little bit more sense. Here it doesn't make any sense at all but who the hell cares. Anyway that is the story of Sonic Triple Trouble. Of course, there's little elements that come here and there, but hey, I, before I can describe the rest of the game, I gotta talk about a new character introduced to this game that would kinda become a mainstay a little bit, tiny bit. Let's talk about that character. Now, despite there's really no conception behind Sonic Triple Trouble, there's a lot of conception stuff about Fang the Sniper, as we will later be known. Here's one of the first concept images. He was created by Sonichi Hagashi as well as his personality being based off the producer of the game, Tadashi Hiro, who made him a bounty hunter guy that kind of gets into a lot of trouble. A sly kind of character. And, yeah, he has a lot of things people don't even know about. One, he has four different names. I always know the character as Fang the Sniper, but there's like four other names, which we'll get into right now, actually. His original name was going to be called Knack. Yeah, Knack. I don't know where Knack comes from, but... Anyway, eventually they decide, no, we can't do that, because Knack sounds too much like Knuckles, or something like that. Well, in Japan, I guess, the pronunciation Knuckles sounds more like Knack. So they change him to Fang. Fang the Hunter. Fang the Sniper. I don't know why I said Hunter. And, uh, and America is like, hey, we'll call him Knack anyway, because I guess Fang the Sniper didn't sound right. They called him Knack the Weasel. He's not a weasel. They thought he made him a weasel. And initially, though, he was set to be called Jet. Though, ironically, there'd be another Sonic character named Jet way later. And then the recent, his recent appearance, he was changed from Fang the Sniper to Fang the Hunter. Because, I guess, Sniper was too dark. One of the weirdest things is that his head was probably based off the uh, Opa Opa, I think, from that one Fantasy Star game that Sega made. Very weird. And the thing about this guy is that he's packing heat. Holy crap, he's got a gun! A lot of fans, for the longest time, wasn't even sure what species this guy was. Look at him. He's so weird looking. His head is based off a weird spaceship from another Sega arcade game. His name kept kept changing. So what is he? Well, he's not a weasel, alright? He is officially a Jeroboa. There's a thing about him being a Jeroboa-Wolf hybrid that was just added later. Um, from his, his creator, he said that he was mostly based off a Jeroboa, which is a little hopping mouse, in case you're wondering. Yeah, originally in the game he was going to shoot Sonic in the face, but I guess they decided that was too violent, so they changed his revolver into a pop gun. This is what a Jerboa looks like. It's a uh, little rodent that hops around, looks like kind of like a kangaroo mouse, but lives in Africa, North Africa, from what I'm aware. Fang would appear in a couple of these classic Sonic games here and after, like quite a few games, including supposed to be in the main new Sonic game, Sonic Extreme, but we'll get to that when we get to that. And then after that, he disappeared from the face of Earth until recently. He's kind of been a fan favorite character, though. He's a unique design, unique personality, uh, and he had a pretty prominent, prominent uh, role in both comic series, Sonic the Comic and the Archie series, and even in the classic comics. So, uh, yeah, he's, just, he's noteworthy. He made a cameo appearance in Generations and uh, Mania, and then he finally came back to the Sonic games in the new recently released Superstars. So... Who knows where this character might go. We might even get some merchandise off this character. Which there is merchandise that was not released for Triple Trouble. It was for Sonic the Fighters. 
And yeah, this character is pretty interesting. I like him quite a bit. I call him, we're well, probably going to call him Fang the Sniper because that's the name I know of. And yeah, anyway, let's get into the rest of the game. We've got some bad nicks to cover before we go on to the rest of the stuff. There's a decent amount of bad nicks, not a whole lot, like Sonic 3. There's just a couple, mostly new ones, and at least they actually have names and are unique and actually appear in the levels so, on like previous Epic games. First, we got Bomba Berry, and this is a little guy that drops bombs. Pretty basic. Bombler is just a thing that kind of bounces around, and yeah, that's about it. Uninteresting as hell. Iliot? Iliot? Whatever, this little thing. It's a warm guy that kind of floats in the air. We've seen this a million times already. Needle Nose from Sonic CD Return. It does the same thing as it does there. Lady Buggy is basically a motobug inside a minecart. That's about it. Mecha Hyoko once again reappears in this game. Penguin Bomber, not confused with Penguinators. It's a penguin that's a bomb that will kind of go towards you and try to explode, but it, they're so easy to kill that you'll never experience that happening. Rabobin? Is that how you say Rabobin? I don't even know. It's basically a uh, splat from Sonic 1, but more angry, I guess. Rital Tap is just a little guy that goes up and down vines. Not really exciting at all. Spital Tap, great name. Just they just hang out on platforms. Very exciting, I know. They just sit there menacingly. Spring Shell is a turtle with a spring on its back. That's it. Those are all the bad nicks. Not thing too exciting here. But hey, that's Sonic Triple Twelve for you. There's also new gameplay mechanics. Not really. Uh, the sign, which works the same way as it does in uh Sonic Chaos and the previous ones, because for some reason each these Sonic Epic games have to have a different sign. So, if you hit this sign, usually it'll be Eggman. If you hit this sign when you're Sonic and it gives you Sonic, you'll be 1 up, 10,000 points for Tails. You get, if Tails is so Sonic, it's 7 points, 1 up for Tails. Hit a ring, you'll get 10 rings. Flicky, you get nothing. Knuckles, you get a continuum. In a Chaos Emerald, you'll get 50 rings for next act. You also can get backwards, which means you gotta spin again. Very exciting, I know. There's a cool new power up called Rocket Shoes. Sonic gets them in some levels, which there's not a whole lot of them in here. He'll just fly for the stage. It's going really fast. It ends shortly, though, so keep that in mind. It's pretty cool, actually. It fits Sonic's arsenal a lot better than some of the other power-ups in the previous games. Hang Glider. When playing as Tails, you get this new ability called the Sea Fox, a little submarine that he built to go through the, the water level in the game. It's pretty unique. You know, he shoots bullets, and he can swim freely around without worrying about drowning. Nice. Sonic gets the propeller shoes instead. They only appear one time as an item box compared to Tail Sea Fox. It basically makes him go really fast underwater. He still can breathe, and once he gets hit, you lose it. So, yeah, that kind of sucks. And during the snow level, Sonic gets a snowboard because, yeah, snowboarding is cool. Alright, let's get into levels. First, Great Turquoise Zone. Yeah, instead of green, it's, it's, it's turquoise, get it? Anyway, Great Turquoise Zone is basically your. A basic level, Sonic intro level. We got trees that have springs on top of them for some reason. Lots of rings. In fact, rings consumption in this game is much better than the other ones. It seems like you keep more of your rings than usual, which is nice. Sonic and Tails have basically most of the same stuff here as it did in Sonic Chaos. Uh, Sonic has Peel Out and Spin Dash. And he also has Spring Shoes, which if you pr jump off them, they, they immediately go away. So not being very exciting there. Most of the power-ups, while neat, there's so little of them, they barely matter. And that's pretty much the same thing that goes a Great Turquoise Zone. It has loop-de-loops, it has your basic Sonic stuff. Sonic feels a little slow and a little laggy. Overall, this level's a good time to, uh, just showcase your Sonic speed on the 8-bit. Overall, this game is mostly okay. And Great Turquoise Zone, in general, doesn't have a whole lot to say. It has ba all your basic, uh, stuff. It only has two enemies, the, uh, Bomba Berry and the Spring Shell, both of which are super easy to deal with. So nothing too difficult there. Well, it has a little bit more fun mechanic-wise, like with bouncy springs and different little pathways. It other feels like it was inspired by uh, Sonic 3. In fact, a lot of the levels feel like they were like, inspired by it. Including this zone, which has definitely a lot of elements from uh, Angel Island, at least in aesthetic. Maybe just your generic Green Hill Zone, but a lot of the other ones have very similar aesthetics to certain Sonic 3 levels. Including the fact that they include Knuckles in the game, as I said. This is the first appearance of Knuckles in the 8-bit. You can't play as him, but he's there, and he's trying to beat up Sonic because he's an idiot and he trusts Eggman. There's no mention of the Master Mode Angel Island, so no, if you want any lore reason there, like I said, the storyline mode isn't really that interesting. The only interesting part about it is that, you know, it's the first appearance of Fang. When running through the level, you'll find Chaos Emerald Miner Boxes, which you gotta hit. This one actually was kind of difficult to hit. And we were supposed to do is jump into a sparkly thing, but I wasn't really aware of that, so I didn't only collected one Chaos Emerald, which is really pathetic. Each of them are kind of hidden in each zone like they were in previous 8-bit ones. I'm not a big fan of that layout, but once again, the uh, the difference in endings doesn't really change that much. So it's not a big deal, in my opinion. You're getting bonuses because like there's only 6 Chaos Emeralds. But I'll show you the special stage anyway because it's a little unique. So what you're supposed to do is hit it and then you jump into the sparkly thing that happens. 
I wasn't aware. It's not very self-explanatory. Players should automatically go into it, but they have to have thermal monitors. That's my opinion. Then you kind of go for this platforming segment, in which the time goes down, but there's so much time, it doesn't really matter. And basically, you got to get to the one side. And once you get to the one side of this platforming arena, you'll meet Fang. See, he's already been here, and he collected the Chaos Emerald. He's like, ha, oh, I'm going to explode you. But it fails on him because he's not very good at mechanics and unlike a knuckles i guess knuckles apparently knows how to push switches fang on the other hand doesn't and that's all you really do you do fight him but like i said if you didn't collect the gas emeralds it doesn't really matter like every other 8-bit sonic game there is an act three and these are just your boss stages this boss is pretty easy it's tart turtle kind of like a just big turtle you know you kind of have to hit him there's not much to him you jump up and hit him but he has a second phase that makes him a little bit more interesting than just hitting him go up into the stage and you gotta use these little shell spring shells to jump up at to, to him. And it actually teaches you a new mechanic where you, which I don't know if this is in other Sonic games, but essentially what you have to do is once you get into the air, Sonic has two states and just running regular spring in the air or a ball. And usually I didn't know this unless I'm just mistaken, but most of the time I thought you couldn't get out this the jump into the air phase without being in a ball. Apparently, if you press the button again, the jump button, in this case, you can go in the ball, and that's how you attack him. I thought, that's pretty interesting. Like I said, I actually have no idea that's an AR Sonic game. I'm not aware of it, because I feel like I would have known that. But that's a useful ability. Anyway, it's a pretty uh, cool thing that te kind of teaches you how to do that. It's something you're going to need to do, do in Sonic Triple Trouble, because Sonic's a lot of times in that empty, empty state, I guess. I'm not sure what would you call that stage, where he's kind of like not in ball form in the air. What do you call that? Anyway, it doesn't really matter. But this boss fight can be hard because one has no rings. Every other boss fight has rings. I just don't know where the rings in this boss fight are. Either way, once you figure it out, it's not too difficult. Just don't die like I did over and over again. When you get to the end of the level, Knuckles appears and he presses a switch because, you know, he did that in Sonic 3. And this time he burns your ass up into the sky into the next zone, if that makes any sense. And that zone is Sunset Park Zone, which is one of the most unique zones in the game. Uh, even though most of these are based off Sonic 3 levels, kind of unique ways, this one is its own basically theme, unless you count Flying Battery or Launch Bay Zone. Sunset Park Zone is basically kind of like a factory on the train tracks and, well, what, right before sunset, if you couldn't tell. So everything has this nice kind of gloomy vibe. It kind of feels cool, even though it doesn't really make much sense to be a second level compared to the other zones. Uh, not that it's really hard or anything, the theme would fit better for a later stage is what I'm trying to say. But, yeah, this level isn't very hard. It's your basic stuff you've seen before. It's just translating some of the Sonic elements into a smaller screen format, and that's most of the whole level. In fact, it's a pretty short level. These levels aren't too long. Most of the time, let's be dealing with the, me the gameplay mechanics more than anything, rather than actual challenge, for the most part. Act 1 and 2 aren't too noteworthy. We got three enemies to fight. We got the Bomba Berry, Kaimek, and Lady Buggy. And overall, they're not too difficult. You can, of course, there's some more rocket shoes that helps you fly for the air. And other than that, we got, don't have much to say about this zone. Just a pretty basic zone, other than these mine carts. Now, one of them you can ride, but after you hit them, they kind of stay there. You jump in them, you can't move. No idea why that even is, but who the hell cares? And, of course, Sonic's getting hit. Also, I think the Kameka, translated in the wiki, is supposed to be the needle nose that enemy, because I just saw it. So if I said that wrong, I'm sorry. I read these off the wiki, and sometimes they use a Japanese name, even though the enemy's not that name. Oh, well, it doesn't really matter. You're just going for basic platforming, nothing too difficult, nothing too challenging. You also have a fun, good old time. Act 3 of this zone really uh, gets interesting. Now we're running on a train, avoiding these new en these enemies that are dropping bombs on us, as well as the gas machine in the train in order to get to the boss fight. The boss fight being called the Marva Shupalupus Guru. What? That's the name. Marva Shupalupus Guru. What? That's Old Caught Train Guy. I have no idea why he's given such a ridiculously long name. It's Train Badnik. I find this boss pretty hard because even though you have a couple bit of rings here, your rings on this stage since you're going really fast get away from you. But if you just avoid its spiky optical schools that it shoots at you, it should be pretty easy and then you can get off that train. The next zone is Mega Meta Junglera. Meta, Meta Junglera. Try saying that three times fast. Zone. It's your basic jungle zone. We've seen a lot of these zones before jungle zones. A wood zone, if you will. My favorite zone. Just kidding. Doesn't exist. And this zone is mostly known for having weird bubble seeds in the air. Uh, I don't know what these are, but they're everywhere, and I don't know what the point is. They just bounce you back down. But yeah, this zone isn't too difficult, just other than trying to figure out how to get past those bubbles, which appear everywhere. A lot of bouncing in this zone, just to say that. There's uh, two, only two enemies, Rubberbin and Radle Top. Uh, both enemies are pretty basic and easy to deal with. Like I said, one just stands there. 
but most of the time it'll be shooting out of barrels, jumping onto tree branches, getting launched by springs. There's a lot of springs in this game in general, to be honest. Look at this guy trying to kill me, but I got him first. This zone is pretty fun because most of the time it'll be dealing with the weird platform mechanics of the game. Now, regular Sonic games will be too difficult, but here the platforming feels a little janky, so it takes a little longer. This this regular Sonic game, this part would be done really quickly. But it's kind of fun, you know, dealing with all the little platforming gimmicks it has. And we got a flicky. Well, Meta Jungler Zone has a pretty good aesthetic, especially for the 8 bits game. Like, this zone actually looks really full of life. Uh, it's pretty short and pretty simple, including the boss here known as Wood Butterrunner Dwarf. But Wood Butterrunner Dwarf. That's the name. And basically all you do is bounce on its head and it's a worm of glasses or something like that. And yeah, it, it's dead. Really easy. Though I guess it did launch itself back at me. Basically, after you defeat it easily, its parts will start flying down. And you just kind of got to wait for it. And it's nothing too difficult here. As long as you collect your ring, which is actually a lot easier in this game than it is in the previous 8-bit games. And you'll be good to go. Nothing too difficult there. Really easy boss. At the end of this zone, Knuckles comes back out. And it'll hit the switch once again. Also, Knuckles is pink in this game, if you couldn't tell, and has yellow socks like he did in the uh, original Sonic 3. The next zone is Robotnik Winter Zone, or Winter Act, according to this part. Uh, Robotnik Winter Zone is weird. Well, it's basically just your basic uh, ice level, and even it's obviously based off ice cap, including the snowboarding section, which, of course, is really fun, because who doesn't like snowboarding in Sonic? It's awesome, and he looks pretty cool. Look him strike that pose. Unfortunately, you lose it pretty quickly because, well, that's just how snowboarding works in Sonic games. It's a fun little, uh, gimmick, but then it ends. Uh, the most weird thing about this zone is the fact that it has Robotnik's name in the title. And I was wondering, wait, is that the same as in the Japanese version? Because that makes no sense. He's called Eggman there. Yeah, it's just called Robotnik's Winter Zone in Japan, too, for some reason. I have no idea why. Uh, it would, maybe it would make sense if this has like, some of his base stuff in here, but other than his bad nicks, the rest of the level feels like a basic ice pal zone you're going through. Something feels mechanical about it, but whatever. Robotnik does Robotnik stuff. This spring area here is really weird, so you gotta like use different type of momentum in order to get up here, and you also got these ice blocks that take you to different sections, but they also take you back down. So you get little bonuses, but at the same time, you also have to go right back down. Like, I wonder what's over here. Oh, it turns out I'm back where I started from. Shucks. So yeah, we mostly have to do a weird platforming, breaking through ice and springs, and like, there's always springs. We get more snowboarding stuff, which is really cool. Breakaway ice, and two, only two bad nicks, which aren't too, which are really easy to deal with. So there's a spital tap, one of the easiest bad nicks of all time, and penguin bomber. Uh, enemy that his ability to blow up is rarely seen, because how easy they are to take to dispose of. Robotic Winter Zone is a pretty fun, fast ice stage, and definitely has a lot of inspiration for Ice Cap, but it's not Ice Cap, because Ice Cap has that amazing music, so it can never beat that. One of the most interesting gimmick series is sometimes they'll go to certain pit areas where they'll just blow you up with wind. I'm not sure exactly what the point of it is, it just looks kind of weird, more than anything. In Act 3, we have a bunch of these penguin bombers coming at us, so what's the boss fight? Huh, why are you shooting all these penguins at us? Luckily, they're giving us a lot of rings to get through these guys. And the boss fight is none other than my favorite character of all time, Giga Thomas Penn. Let me say that again. The character's name is Giga Thomas Penn. Penn in quotation marks for whatever. Uh, why is it called that? I, 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 I don't know. It's basically just a bird that kind of looks like a penguin but isn't. And then it's easy to defeat. So, uh, yeah, that's Giga Thomas Penn. And Sonic's is going to run past him and jump all the way into, down to the pit because, you know, he's done. Oh yeah, and Knuckles is here to push another switch. Only in Sonic 3 with these switches, they actually uh, don't do anything interesting. Because this time we get covered in snow, rather than I get covered in fire. The next zone is Tidal Plant Zone. Now, Tidal Plant Zone is your water stage. And, oh, I'm scared. Well, it's pretty basic. It has the a lot of those big air bubbles, like in the previous games. have a lot more of those. Tails has his, uh, whatever you call it, a sea fox. So that makes it pretty easy. And the level is pretty basic. E it's not. It's pretty easy. The only problem is that it feels like it goes on for way too long, unfortunately. So you're gonna be stuck bu doing bubble work for the most part, and it's not really not that fun. It's it's basic, but kind of boring. And this deck isn't that interesting, and it, it's slow. And the game already felt kind of slow. So yeah, all that on top of that doesn't really work. So like triple trouble doesn't really work with momentum. It's more like a basic platforming and trying to use the weird momentum to, as platforms. So the large levels just don't really work here. And most times be in bubbles, and yeah. Overall, Sonic War levels are a really hard thing to make. If you do it right, it, it works. When you don't, it just sucks. And Tidal Plant is an example of it sucking. 
One of the reasons it sucks is because we got pipes again. Yeah, remember those awful pipes from Sonic 2? The 8-bit? Yeah, they're back. I always say Sonic 2 because it was a reference to that 8-bit one, but I keep saying, but I always say, oh yeah, Sonic 2 8-bit. I'm kind of glad they have unique names after the, the first two because it's so annoying to say, yeah, Sonic 2 8-bit, Sonic 2 8-bit, oh, whatever. Anyway, these pipes suck, so they, they shoot you out all over the place and they're easy to go back into, and tr I'm trying to avoid these spikes here, I accidentally go back into it and then to go all the way through the, the animation over and over again. The pipes are just a maze of stuff and they're just annoying and I hate them. So after avoiding spikes in the one enemy, being the Elito, or however you say it, we get our boss fight against Knuckles. Yeah, Knuckles is in a mecha, mecha himself, and he just throwing bombs at us and laughing his ass off. What a jackass. Shooting missiles, throwing bombs. Knuckles, that's not very nice, and he kills Sonic. This boss fight's actually easy, even though I died the first time, because I discovered he's go all to the right and keep jumping at him, and he can't do jack shit about it. And, yeah, that's how you get, that's how you beat Knuckles. I mean, he is kind of an idiot. Why is he teaming up with Eggman? Uh, who, who the hell knows? And I guess he drowned there. Not really. He's not dead. Obviously. We then come to our last level, Atomic Destroyer Zone. This game is pretty short for the most part, other than these last two levels actually being a l little bit longer. Not because of that for the length, but more of being slowed down. Atomic Destroyer Zone is kind of annoying. We got breakable blocks and a whole lot of those pipes. Yeah, and you have to figure out the puzzle, and that's really annoying. I didn't use a guy because I could have cheated, but I didn't, and it took me forever to figure out these pipes. It's not fun. It's not like you die instantly like you can have a Sonic 2 during those pipe sequence, but these pipes are be the death of me. I hate them. And other than that, the level isn't that difficult. Just dealing with stupid pipes all over the place. You're not going to really die. You're just going to have to deal with stupid pipe mechanics and try to figure out where they go. I spent way too long in this zone with these pipes. And there's not that many enemies. Here, there's the Bomb Blower and Mecha Hayoko. The Mecha Hayokos are the ones you'll see a lot because some switches you press will spawn them like that. That's actually kind of interesting, kind of like how Eggman creates his the bad nicks. It's a shame because I spent a third of my time playing this game on this zone, which is kind of sad. The game is like an hour long or less than, depending on how fast you are at the game. Because it's not a game I play that often. Because overall, even though it's okay, it's not really that fun. So overall, I don't really remember these... Um, layouts like I do with this the class other Genesis games because I don't really have that much need to. This section here is like the, the worst part ever because it's so confusing. And I finally got it but it took way too long. I hate this area here so much. He's looking at this right now it's gonna be a PTSD so let's get out of here. Though believe it or not F3 is really cool because we get our rock shoot power up was pretty cool and Metal Sonic? Yeah we're gonna fight Metal Sonic again. His first reappearance since Sonic CD I, of course, it's first to reappear with Knuckles in Sonic 3, but, you know, it's not as exciting since he already debuted just now. But Metal Sonic, is, yeah, he's back. He's not any other version of Metal Sonic. No Mecha, no Silver Sonic. Mecha Sonic 2, or whatever we call it now. It's just regular old Metal Sonic, and that's pretty cool. This is the first time this version of Metal Sonic's like, wait, this is the reoccurring version, the robotic version of Sonic. Metal Sonic, he's cool. And his boss fight's also pretty neat, where he basically does his charge attack from Sonic CD really fast after fighting him with the rocket shoes, and you gotta avoid it, and then when he's done charging, you guess we can get, be able to hit him. So this is obviously one of the best parts of the game, because it's really cool and feels really dramatic. And it's actually kind of a really well-designed boss fight. I quite like it a lot. The Metal Sonic isn't too much of a hassle for Sonic to take care of, after all, we already defeat him in Sonic CD. So a couple of hits to his head will make him go away. Now it's time to hop in the elevator and see what the heck Eggman's cooking up. Before we meet Eggman, we gotta see Fang again, who's taunting us once again, thinking how cool he is. But uh-oh, uh, he did something wrong, or maybe he's scared or something. That being Eggman's m machine that sucks ass. This is called Boss 1. There's three types of bosses, and each of them are super easy to take out. Eggman's final boss in this game is pissfully easy. Actually, Boss 3 is. And Boss 1 and 2, there are. You just jump up and hit them. Boss 1 is super easy. Boss 2, just keep on hitting him. Boss 3 is a little more challenging, but nothing that you can't handle. Eggman goes to this weird room where there's a bunch of lasers shooting down at you, and you gotta avoid them all, trying to hit him during a certain amount of times, but it's kind of hard to. This is more annoying than anything. It's not really hard, just kind of like, ugh. Like, get your fat ass over here, Eggman. And that's mostly all you do. It's gotta wait for him to show up and just try to hit him. You can kind of go in the, the chamber with him, but it doesn't really seem to do much. I'm not sure if I hit him sometimes or if I do not. It's really unclear and overall not that well designed with boss fight. It sucks. So after that, you chase Eggman and his fat self, and he tries to get away. And Sonic just hits him in the head, and he explodes, and he drops into he falls down, and he drops his Chaos Emerald. So Sonic has two Chaos Emeralds in this. I don't have the other four though. 
That kind of sucks. And then that's pretty much all there is to say about this game. However, look at that. Knuckles is stuck in his cage. Wah wah. And Knuckles and Sonic shake hands. Isn't that nice? They become friends. Sonic's like, hey, I forgive you for being an idiot and trusting Eggman again. It's like, okay, thanks, Sonic. And that's the end. If you're like me and didn't get the Chaos Emeralds, because it doesn't really matter, Fang will just laugh at you because, uh oh, he had four Chaos Emeralds. I guess he dropped them, so we can go grab them easily. They're right there. I guess not. Try again. Wah wah. And the good ending is really just just see Sonic and Tails flying away in the tornado. Not really that exciting. That's all you get. Ow, and I know trouble when I see it. Yikes! This is Triple Trouble, the new Sonic game for Game Gear. Trouble is doing stupid cheese ads. It's the cheesiest. Triple Trouble is Sonic battling the evil Dr. Robotnik, Knuckles, and Nat. But that trouble ain't nothing compared to this. Oh, Sonic Triple Trouble and Sega Game Gear, each sold separately. Batteries not included. Sonic Triple Trouble was actually given a fan remake recently, and it caught a lot of ways because, well, it's good. Basically, it basically treats Triple Trouble as if it was a true sequel to Sonic 3, basically if it was Sonic 4. Well, it reinterprets story plots to make a bit more sense, like Knuckles getting hypnotized by Eggman or something else, I'm not too sure actually. And the gameplay is refined to be based off the, you know, the elements of the classic Sonic games, including uh, Sonic 3 elements, uh, the spin drop dash for Sonic Mania. It includes a yellow shield from Sonic uh, 3D Blast, which allows him to do a homing attack. And overall, it adds a lot more cool things, like the uh, special stages are like Sonic 3, this time you actually fight against Knack and them, which is pretty cool. Overall, it's a pretty good game. There's a lot more to talk about here, but since it's not officially released Sega game, I can't say much more about it, but if you want to play Triple Trouble, I do recommend playing this, even though it's basically a brand new game from the ground up, since, you know, it takes elements from the game, like the label design elements, mostly just the theming, not really the design. Uh, yeah, overall, I do recommend this version, but I don't have much else to say more about it, because it's not an officially licensed Sega product. It's pretty cool, though, so check it out. Sonic Triple Trouble is a little more expensive, at least you want to complete, but 16 bucks isn't too bad. But compared to the other gamer games, Sonic has, they're actually a little more pricey than the other ones. Not by a lot, though. So if you want this game, I still recommend playing anything on the Game Gear. And this actually doesn't have a Master System version, not like the other ones. So it's over, overall, I don't recommend playing it on this original version. Uh, there's actually a lot less release for Trouble Trouble. So we'll go over these pretty quickly since I've covered most of these before in previous videos. Sonic Adventure DX. I'll say this again, I've said it before. Sonic Adventure DX has the ability where you collect every album, every 50 or 100 albums you collect, you get a Game Gear game, and it has every Game Gear game release. It's a pretty cool way to playing him. Not the most ideal way, because you have to unlock them, and there's easier ways to do it, but if you like Sonic Adventure DX like I do, you get free Game Gear games while you play it. I think I mentioned Gem Collection before. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did, but Gem Collection is a weird Sonic Collection where it basically includes Sonic games that weren't included in a uh, Mega Collection. You know, they really should have just been part of the Mega Collection instead of this weird one. Anyway, so Jump's Collection is on GameCube and on PS2 in different regions, not America. The overall, isn't the best way to play these games. There's, it's worth it for the, the to, for some games, but the Game Gear games, it's not worth buying it. It's mostly only worth it for getting Sonic CD. That's not easy. It's probably easy at the time, but then now it's easier to find. Mostly, it's just for getting Sonic the Fighters and Sonic R, which are a little harder to find nowadays. And lastly, the game's released on Sonic Origins Plus, which once again has all the gamer games. The most Probably the most ideal way are than emulating it. And yeah, that's the best way to play it. It's Sonic Origins Plus. There's not much competition for this one, though, so... And, yeah, that's not, that's not a whole, whole lot of re-release for Sonic Triple Trouble, despite it being considered to be one of the best of the 2D 8-bit Sonic games. Here's the current tier list. I would have put Sonic Triple Trouble maybe in B tier, but overall, I don't think it quite reaches that uh, statement. Mostly because the levels aren't really that noteworthy, and it feels like a game that I'm going to forget about. The story, it, it kind of sucks. I mean, a lot of these sort of Sonic early stories aren't that great. The Genesis ones seem to try to have a bit more. Sonic 3, of course, has a pretty good story. But overall, I feel like it's kind of lame, especially as a follow up to Sonic 3, and that story wise. Uh, and overall, it feels kind of it feels a little lacking in content. The 16 bit version, the fan made one, I know, at, well, Colors would have more features, but just that compared to the original 8 bit. It really showcases what it could have really been. But Triple Trouble's not bad. Overall, that's uh, it for that game. 